Hey everyone, welcome back to another Splatoon General Tips video. All of the previous tips can be found in the video description below. And almost all of those tips still apply to Splatoon 2, so it's still worth checking them out and practicing them. And this is my friend Jessica. We've been squid partying for the past few rounds. Ah, so cute, so cute. Of course, there's always this one jerk that wants to ruin everything. Is that Jessica over there to the right? I think it is. Don't kill her, she's just squid party. She just wants a squid party, why would you shoot her? Jessica, it's too dangerous over here, follow me. It's safer around this corner, we can squid party as much as we want over here. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Well anyway, yeah, most of the tips still apply to Splatoon 2, so check them out. And as always, if you already know these tips, great. But there are people that are new to the Splatoon series, and there are people who've played this for a long time, but still don't practice them. So anyhow, with that out of the way, let's continue where we left off in our previous General Tips video. Number 16. Turf control is essential. To most players, inking turf in a mode other than Turf War is probably an afterthought. Most of the time, they're thinking about splatting other players or are too focused on the objective, Rainmaker, Tower Control, or Splat Zone. Most players are not thinking, I need to ink the turf, and that is probably one of the reasons why they lose their ranked matches, and they probably don't even realize it. Inking turf allows your team to literally move around the map and limit where the enemy team can go. Listen again to what I just said. Inking turf limits where the enemy team can go. Have you ever been in the situation where it's impossible to move out of your base? Or if you do, you just die immediately over and over again? More often than not, the main reason for this is because the enemy team has already gained control of the turf. Or simply put, they gained map control. Take a look at this. We're playing on Kelp Dome. I'm on orange and you're on blue. I currently have map control. Let's say you're here. The moment you spray your ink and try to move out, we're going to swarm all over you and make you regret ever giving us map control. I mean, where are you going to go? You're stuck in a small puddle of ink. Take a look at this clip. We pretty much have map control. Watch as they try to push into our turf and immediately get shut down. Why? Because we have control of the turf, and as a result, we can go and attack from wherever we want, and they are completely helpless. So no, these matches are not all about getting the most kills. If you're not great at splatting people, ink the turf. Your team will benefit greatly from it, which is one of the beauties of Splatoon. You don't need to be good at shooters to help your team in this game. Oh, and one more thing before I move on to next tip. Here we have the same map again. Your orange and your objective, whatever that is, the Rainmaker, Tower, Splat Zone, is at the center of the map. Let's say we haven't inked these places which are far away from the objective. Don't leave the objective and go out of your way just to ink those places because those areas are not important. When I say map control is crucial, I'm not telling you to ink every corner of the map. Just make sure the area around the objective is well covered. Number 17. Recon. By pressing the recon button, you can play test the maps in the current map rotation. There are two benefits to doing this. Number 1. In one of my previous live streams, I was doing private battles with my viewers, and there was a new player on my team. It was coincidentally the same mode and map, Rainmaker on Hammerhead Bridge. He grabbed the Rainmaker, and instead of staying on this upper platform, he dropped down below and thought he could take that route instead. He didn't know that that led to a dead end. After the match, he told me that was his first time he ever grabbed the Rainmaker on this map and wasn't sure where to go. This is where Recon comes in handy for new players. When you playtest the map with Recon, you can explore the map and find out what is and what isn't possible to do in the map. Number 2. Maps have different layouts depending on the mode. Here you can see that if we're playing Rainmaker on Hammerhead Bridge, these walls are available for us to climb.
but if we're playing Turf War on Hammerhead Bridge, these walls aren't available to us. So what's so great about reconning this? Well, you know exactly what paths you can take and you can pre-plan before you jump into a ranked match. And you actually see me doing this a couple of times in my live streams. Number 18, jump shots with chargers. Before we get into jump shots, I need to talk about snapshots with chargers. If you don't know what snapshots are, basically every charger has a laser pointer that is on at all times, and you never want to aim that laser directly at your target while charging your shot. Why? Because your target will see the laser and swim away. What you want to do is aim at something else and then at the last second snap to your target and fire. Hence the name snapshots. Now let's talk about jump shots. The first thing you want to do is make sure there is an object between you and your target. The object has three purposes. One, it will act as a shield for you while you charge up. Two, it hides the laser from your target. And three, it creates two crosshairs on the screen. When doing jump shots, you only care about this one. Use this crosshair to line up your shot, then jump and shoot. If you're above your target, you can use the floor as the object between you and your target. Jump shots are situational, they don't work everywhere. And there are three things to keep in mind when doing jump shots. Number one, don't hide behind large objects that you can't jump and peek over. Number two, this will not work if your target is close to you. The farther, the better. Number three, this works best if you and your target are on different elevations. In other words, this works best if you and your target are on different heights of the map. Number 19, bad abilities. Here I'll be talking about abilities you shouldn't ever use. The first one is recon. Recon displays the enemy's location on your gamepad, but it requires you to stand on your spawn point. It lasts 3.5 seconds after you leave said spawn point. This is pretty pointless because it requires you to be away from the action in order for the ability to kick in. And besides, the 3.5 seconds is so short that by the time you reach the front lines, the ability would have wore off and the enemies would be somewhere else. Recon also shows the enemy's weapon, but is that really helpful? Not really. The second one is Opening Gambit. Opening Gambit boosts your run speed and swim speed for the first 30 seconds. But then for the remainder of the match, 4.5 minutes for ranked matches, it does absolutely nothing. You basically wasted an ability slot. The third one is Last Ditch Effort. Last Ditch Effort increases Ink Saver main and sub and Ink Recovery for the last 30 seconds. Just like Opening Gambit, you basically have an ability that does nothing for the first 4.5 minutes which is pretty much the entire match. The ability also kicks in if you're in overtime or if the other team's score reaches 30 or less in Tower Control and Rainmaker. If you're using the ability for those reasons, you're basically hoping your team does really bad. And what if the enemy team never reaches 30 distance or less? Well then, your ability never kicks in until the last 30 seconds. But then you're like, oh, but Sam, what if the enemy team reaches 30 or less very early on? then the ability will last throughout the entire match. Well, my friend, you're basically relying on luck because that rarely happens. And even if that does happen, your team is in such deep trouble that not even all the last-ditch effort in the world would be able to save you. Fourth one is Comeback. Comeback gives you the effects of Ink Saver Main and Sub, Run Speed Up, Swim Speed Up, and Special Charge Up for the first 20 seconds after respawning. This sounds great on paper, but think about it. It requires you to die for the ability to kick in, and it only lasts for a short amount of time. And by equipping comeback, you're relying on your poor performance, i.e. dying a lot, for your ability to work. When you use an ability that requires you to die, you're subconsciously thinking, 
It doesn't matter how bad I do. I can be as sloppy as I want and die as many times as I want because comeback will make me better. It doesn't. It does not help you, not in the long run, because you're not going to change how you play the game and try to improve. You're still going to make the same mistakes and die over and over again because subconsciously, you think it's okay to die. Why? Because the ability wants you to. But it's not okay to die because your presence on the map is very important. It affects the enemy's behavior and the decisions and actions they make. If you're dying a lot, change how you play the game instead of relying on this crutch ability. And what if you don't die? Well, that's great. But now the comeback that you have equipped does absolutely nothing. Fifth one is Haunt. Upon death, the player that splatted you will be tracked and can be seen by your entire team. Again, you shouldn't use this for the exact same reasons as comeback. You're relying on dying, and if you don't die, Haunt does absolutely nothing. But wait Sam, Haunt has another effect. If you equip Haunt and then someone tracks you with a point sensor, echolocator, or Haunt, you get a damage up, defense up, and run speed up effect. Okay, but what good is that going to do you? Are you going to be more aggressive and just charge in there with your newly acquired damage, defense, and run speed up? You're going to die if you do that, because remember, you're still being tracked. Their entire team will see you coming and destroy you. And then there's the case of what if you die and then your opponent dies immediately after? Well, your haunt does absolutely nothing. It's not going to track that person because he or she is already dead. Sixth one is quick respawn. Guess what? Same reasons as the others. You're relying on dying, and if you don't die, this ability did absolutely nothing. Essentially just wasting a slot at that point. Seventh one is special saver. It reduces the amount of special gauge lost after being splatted, and you can only save up to 50% of your special gauge. Same reasons as the others. But also keep in mind that you're only saving up to 50% of your gauge. You can easily refill that amount by inking turf. And then what if you die with a very low special gauge? Is saving that amount really helpful? Psst. No, no it isn't. Number 20. Krakens destroy bombs by booping them. If there is a bomb, just swim over it with a kraken and poof, the bomb just disappears. Now I'm not telling you to use a kraken and swim over every bomb you see. That would be pointless. But there are some applications to this. If you see an enemy plant a bomb at a teammate's squid jump and assuming you can swim over there in time, use the kraken to destroy the bomb. The window of opportunity for this is very narrow though so the chances of you pulling this off is very slim. You can also use the Kraken to swim through bomb rushes. Watch out though, existing explosions from the bomb rush can still knock you back. And special thanks to Yuki for helping me out with this footage. Anyway, that's it for now. If you found this helpful or know of anyone that can benefit from these tips, please share them, because the better our teammates get, the less we're gonna blame them when we lose. Anyway, love you all. Bye.